Be afraid. Be very afraid. Hello, sharks. I'm Dan, and I've been designing kitchen gadgets for 40 years. I'm gonna test some gadgets that you may have seen on the show Shark Tank and see if I can find a way to make them better. If it was angled more, then make this a convex shape. Size it for the inner shape of the bread. These are the gadgets I'm going to test. Turkey chainsaw, guzzle buddy, baker's edge brownie pan, scrub daddy, fun bites food cutter. Mighty Carver, Turkey Chainsaw. Its purpose in life is to scare the crap out of your family at Thanksgiving. Let's see how effective it is. I'm gonna try to get a couple of slices off of the breast. Be afraid, be very afraid. All right, that was strangely satisfying. The cut itself was relatively easy. The holding it was rather awkward, but I thought the blades worked fine. Let's see what it's like to dismember the leg. Well, it's not doing what a chainsaw would do, and actually this plastic piece is preventing me from getting deep into the leg to really do the cutting. So at this point, what I would have to do is get a good old manual knife. Not great. Let's say you don't have a turkey chainsaw at home. Let's see how it compares to a regular carving knife. In terms of effectiveness, I would give the turkey chainsaw a three out of five. If they still have an appetite after that horrific looking mutilation of the turkey, I think they'd be fine eating it. Let's try the left-handed oil test. By making my non-dominant hand slippery and using my non-dominant hand, it's a quick way to point out any deficiencies in usability. Whoa, it started a little too soon, but I'm still okay, I think. So it sliced through it, no problem. In general, the whole operation just seems a little more unwieldy than it should be. In terms of usability, I would give the Mighty Carver Turkey Chainsaw a two out of five, only because it seems unnecessarily heavy and it does demand a two-hand operation. And not to mention the fact that it's just kind of overall silly. Let's talk about a redesign. The plastic piece on top is purely superficial. It is there to make this look like a chainsaw, but in doing that, it is really making the chainsaw less usable. I think I would actually extend these blades. So if you're using an actual chainsaw, you really wouldn't want to use the tip like this, but if you're using a knife or a carving knife, that front edge becomes very important. The other thing that's problematic is that it's not easily designed to hold with one hand. I mean, the balance is a bit off. It's a little bit back heavy here. Aside from that, cleanability is gonna be hellish. As a designer, I'm actually a little insulted by this. This is, I could see what they're going for, like some sort of fun aspect to carving a turkey, but there's so much plastic in, so much waste. You certainly don't want the kids getting hold of this because they wanna play with the chainsaw that's in the kitchen. So in that regard, it could be very dangerous. In terms of a buy rating for the Mighty Carver Turkey Chainsaw, I would give this a zero out of five. I wouldn't really recommend this to anyone. It's a whole lot of plastic, it doesn't function well. I just want nothing to do with it, and for that reason, I am out. Guzzle Buddy. Its purpose in life is to make you feel better about drinking wine straight from the bottle. Let's see how effective it is. I have a bottle of white wine. Guzzle Buddy is inserted. Let's see how it goes. I'm trying the chug thing. Okay, so there's basically a hole here, so it doesn't keep the wine in the glass itself, and you literally are just drinking from the bottle. It maybe is just a little bit more presentable. Although I think once you start drinking from this, you're pretty much committed to finishing the whole bottle, which may not be a problem for a lot of you, unless your friends don't mind drinking backwash. Let's see how the Guzzle Buddy compares to drinking wine from a boring old wine glass. In terms of effectiveness, I would give the Guzzle Buddy a three out of five. It may look just a little bit better than drinking directly out of the bottle, but really that's up to you and your friends. 
Let's test its usability. Both hands are oiled up. I will insert guzzle body and I'm finding that because it's a full body and the weight is a little heavy at the far end, I'm gonna to try to choke up on it. But of course, that's not gonna to work too well with the slippery hands. This is so hard to hold, what you may wanna do is just drink it really fast. In terms of usability, I would give the Guzzle Buddy a one out of five. It just wasn't that pleasant to use, it kind of gushes. To be honest, I would just drink it straight out of the bottle, as usual. So let's talk about a redesign. What's interesting about the Guzzle Buddy is I never really considered a bottle of wine a single serve portion. So one of the things that I may suggest, a valve of some sort and maybe just a simple like flapper valve so that when you pour it, it will go upright and you still have your wine contained in the glass. So one solution, another thought is what if this was designed with a stem on it without a hole that would allow it to stand and you could pour the wine into it. In terms of a buy rating, I would give the Guzzle Buddy a one. It just doesn't do anything magical enough. You can't even pass the bottle around because you have so much backwash. Nice try, Guzzle Buddy. Baker's Edge Brownie Pan. It is designed to maximize the amount of edges in your batch of brownies. Let's test its effectiveness. Like even though this is non-stick, I have better luck by oiling it. We want browned brownies, not stuck brownies. I think I will start by trying not to get it on the ridges. I would probably go with that as it is. It looks relatively even. Off to the oven. Okay, we're back from the kitchen and we've got some brownies baked and cooled and it's time to remove some brownies. So the Baker's Edge brownie pan comes with a spatula sized for the brownies that it makes. And boy, I do f hear it like it's crusty on the edge. Let's work our way around. Now it's pretty easy. It actually released pretty quickly and easily. Okay, let's try one of the brownies and guess what? I'm gonna try one with a triple edge. It tastes fine. Again, the example is I don't just get one edge, I get three. I've gotta say honestly, until I saw this product, I never spent that much time thinking about brownie edges. Now, after trying this, that's all I can think about. Brownie edges. Solved a problem that I never knew I had. Let's see how the Baker's Edge brownie pan compares with a more standard brownie pan. In terms of effectiveness, I would give the Baker's Edge brownie pan a five out of five. It certainly did what it was purported to do. If you like brownie edges, this would be the way to go. I have instantly become a fan of brownie edges. I'm gonna test its usability. Let's start to extract some brownies. Again, I'm using the spatula that came with the Baker's Edge pan. First brownies out, took a bit of force to do that because you can see what I'm doing is I'm pressing down a lot. I'm pushing down along the edge quite a bit, but there's nothing for me to push against. I've got a slippery handle, a straight sided handle, and as I push down that way, my hand just wants to slip. So that wasn't as easy as it could have been. In terms of usability, I would give this a 4.5, and there's nothing wrong with the pan. The pan itself would get a five if it wasn't for the spatula, which could use some improvement. So let's talk about a redesign. My suggestion here is gonna be pretty straightforward. I would make sure that this is firm enough to cut into the brownies, but mainly what I would do is anticipate the fact that you will be pushing down that way and you wanna push against something. So either make this a convex shape or a concave shape. This applies to a lot of products that we talk about. A simple shape could really help your hand maneuver and apply some force and pressure. So for a buy rating, I would give it a five out of five. I think it does what it promises to do and it does it really effectively. I would encourage Mr. Wonderful to invest in it. Spatula, not so much. Scrub Daddy, scouring pad. Its purpose in life is to clean your pots and pans with a smile. Let's see how effective it is. One of the interesting properties of Scrub Daddy is that in cold water at room temperature, it's rather stiff and scrubby, but in hot water or warm water, it will soften up. 
Let's see what that means for scrubbing a pan. This has been soaking in cold water, which means it's stiffened up a bit. It does feel like it has some abrasion to it. It is working, but it would take some going back and forth. Let's do this next. Let's put it in the warm water. Gonna let it sit for a second, and let's try warm water. And I think what's interesting and maybe a contradiction is that if I really wanted to scrub a pan, I would use hot water and a more abrasive scrub pad. But what's happening with Scrub Daddy is the cold water is making it stiffer and more abrasive and the hot water is softening it. So it seems like a bit of oppositeness is going on, if that's a word. Let's see how we did. I don't see any significant difference between the cold and the hot part. But I think in either case, the Scrub Daddy did okay. Scrub Daddy claims it can do a number of things. One claim that Scrub Daddy makes is that you can use a smile to clean a spoon or utensils. Another claim is that you can put your fingers into the eye holes and be able to twist around when it's inside a glass. Finally, they say that you can even scrub the skin off of a potato. So technically, we were somewhat successful. It can do some of those things. Let's say you don't have a scrub daddy in your kitchen. Let's see how it compares to a more traditional scouring sponge. In terms of effectiveness, I would give the scrub daddy a three out of five. I think the thing that's holding me back is the contradiction that with hot water, it gets softer and it's less abrasive when that's really where you want the abrasion. We're not gonna do the left-handed oil test with scrub daddy. It doesn't really make sense. Soap and water is the enemy of oil. But in terms of usability, I would give the Scrub Daddy a three out of five. Finger holes work well. It's okay to put utensils into the mouth to clean those off. The real problem is, and the contradiction is that it softens up in hot water when you want the hot water the most. Let's talk about a redesign. This may be a anti-Scrub Daddy idea, but what it would it be like if there was a more traditional scrub pad on one side of it? So what you would have is the best of both worlds. You'd have something that would stiffen up in cold water, be soft, but still be abrasive. You could use either side of it because it has two sides. So it would be a combination of Scrub Daddy and a more traditional scouring pad. So I have been informed that this is not an original idea. This does exist. It is from the makers of Scrub Daddy and it is called Scrub Mommy. Great minds think alike. In terms of a buy rating, I would give a Scrub Daddy a three out of five. And do you know why? Because I think I would give Scrub Mommy a higher rating. So Scrub Daddy, since I learned about Scrub Mommy, you are dead to me. Fun Bites Food Cutter. Their purpose in life is to cut food into fun little shapes for kids. Let's see how effective they are. I have in front of me a stack of peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. So let's just go right for the middle. I'm gonna press down and I can see that there's peanut butter and jelly squishing out. The bottom of this is curved, which gives me a chance to rock it. I am now going to extract. It looks pretty clean on this side. Looks a little messy on this side. And let's see what we get. A little more gooey than I would hope. The top of the bread didn't stay intact. The peanut butter and jelly just oozed around it. So not as beautifully clean as you would expect, or at least you would want. Let's see how the Fun Bites food cutters compare to using a bread knife. In terms of effectiveness, I would give the Fun Bite Food Cutters a two out of five. I was a little disappointed in their performance, especially with peanut butter and jelly, but I was also rather disappointed that they're not sized really for a standard sized piece of bread. Let's test its usability. This is designed for kids and there's no real easy way for me to simulate that. Even though I'm making my hands slippery, I gave up on the peanut butter and jelly because I think that's gonna be an oozing mess. So I'm gonna start with just a plain piece of bread and see how they work. I'll start with the plain squares, press down and rock. I do have some cubes. This is giving me hope that if it was a cheese sandwich or something a little more solid, that this would be usable and you would end up with bite-sized pieces. And let's try watermelon. I'm gonna do the heart-shaped pieces on the watermelon. Position somewhere near the center, press down, pop it up, press it out. This time I'm gonna press it a little more carefully so that it falls into place. And that actually looks pretty good. 
That would be fun to present. Again, you have a lot of leftover watermelon that someone's got to eat. Let's try a self-portrait out of watermelon and bread. Heart-shaped eyes, a lovely little nose. Let's see how effective it is. This guy's okay. In terms of usability, I would give this a three out of five. It works better on some food than others, but it's a little too wasteful for me to love it. Let's talk about a redesign. One of the things I was concerned about was the amount of waste. What I would suggest, or at least try, is making this large enough so that it either more fully covers a piece of bread and leaves out the crust, or even go large enough so that we include the crust. Worst case scenario, if you overshoot the size, you may trick the kids into eating some of the crust. The first round of messiness had to do with peanut butter and jelly. I would experiment with some larger sizes, very specifically for peanut butter and jelly. In terms of a buy rating, I would give the Fun Bites food cutters a two out of five. I know what they're going for, and the amount of waste is just, I think, a bit unforgivable. Personally, I am not ready to invest in Fun Bites food cutters. Not that I have any money to invest. Bonus gadget. You may not have noticed, but I've been wearing another Shark Tank gadget this entire time. The Bev Buckle. Its purpose in life is to hold my beer. Five out of five. So all of these have already passed the Shark Tank test. And that says something. Some of these have some sort of spark or some sort of fun aspect to them. Still, I think some of them are performing better than others. Scrub Daddy, for instance, is a big hit. People love it. Not too sure about the turkey chainsaw. But all that said, all of these gadgets are kind of fun. So keep up the good work, sharks. Especially you, Mr. Wonderful.